Before you listen to the show, I want to let you guys know that we recorded this great debate before the news of JHI's torn ACL hit. So keep that in mind as you listen, and of course, adjust your opinions accordingly. I challenge you to a duel. It's the only argument I need! Now, I don't want to talk to you no more, you... You got a lot of nerve. Soon you will know what it's like to be defeated. Stop defending him, Sean! All right, let's go. Hey, sleepers, welcome to the Sleeper Wire Great Debate Show. It is our fifth waiver wire great debate of the season. I am your host once again, Professor Chris and Dirty Jobs Mike, back for the third week in a row. How's it going, man? Hey, not too bad, man. How's it going? What a what another good weekend of football, huh? Another good weekend of football. Yeah, I thought the matchups this week were kind of lackluster, but the games were pretty fun. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of really close games. That's what I liked about it. They, you know, one of those end of the game possessions, you get the heart, get the heart beaten and everything like that. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a good week. It was fun. All right, guys. So you guys know the drill, right? It's a waiver wire. Great debate. We take two guys that are most or, you know, mostly unowned. So 50 percent or less most of the time and debate which guy you should pick up on waivers this week. So who should you put that claim in for? This show is called The Great Debate because that's exactly what we're doing. We're debating these two players. We're not arguing these two players. It's not going to be like a 30-minute argument between these guys. We get two and a half minutes to argue for our player, 90 seconds for a rebuttal, and then wrapping up with final thoughts on our player. There's no winner and there's no loser of the debate. Just unbiased, objective, stats-based arguments for and against these two guys. And today, got running backs. We're doing Alfred Morris versus Wendell Smallwood. I'm going to do Alf, and Mike has Smallwood. Mike, you ready to get started? Yes, I am. All right, so Alfred Morris has his shot at being the lead back once again. Matt Barreto went down with a mid to high ankle sprain this past week, and chances are he's likely going to be out at least one week, maybe two. He hasn't officially been ruled out for Monday Night Football yet, but I would not be surprised if they give him at least a week to rest his ankle. Let's take a look at what happened the last time that Alfred Morris had the backfield to himself last season from weeks 10 through 15 during the Ezekiel Elliott suspension. 99 carries over those six weeks, 339 yards and a rushing touchdown. That's an average of 16.5 carries per game uh, for 3.42 yards per carry. That's not spectacular by any means, but those are decent numbers for a running back too, I guess. And that's, you know, splitting the backfield with Rod Smith. Morris is now basically the only guy in the 49ers backfield, aside from fullback Kyle Juszczyk. He's the big bruising back who's now going to have at least the first and second down work, if not the majority of the third down work as well, with not really a pass catching running back behind him. So far this season, Alfred Morris has had 14 or more carries three times with 18 carries and three catches this last week with the Breda injury. That's 21 total touches last week. Volume is king in fantasy football for a running back, and Alfred Morris is going to get volume. He's had 12 red zone carries so far this season, which is tied with Zeke, James Conner, and Kareem Hunt. Now, by no means am I saying that Alfred Morris is as good as these guys, but he is getting touches inside the red zone. His six attempts in, or at the goal line inside of the five are tied for third after only Todd Gurley and Carlos Hyde. This guy is getting the ball in the goal line and in the red zone, and that was happening before Matt Breda went down. Breda has eight red zone rushing attempts this season. That means that Morris's red zone touches are likely going to go up with him being out a week, most likely. This week, the 49ers are going up against the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay. The Packers are tied for 25th in the NFL when it comes to giving up rushing touchdowns. They've given up five so far, so they average giving up a rushing touchdown a game. They're ranked 15th against the run. When it comes to rushing yards, giving up an average of 105 yards on the ground per game. They're 19th in giving up yards per attempt. Running backs average 4.2 yards per carry against them. With C.J. Beathard behind center, there is a pretty good chance that the 49ers are going to up their run game. They're not. Okay, so Alfred Morris is 29 years old, which in the world of running backs is like being 70 years old. It's not young he's been out there for a very long time 
and he barely ever even gets used when he's got competition out there on the field. So when Breed is out there, he is getting used, but it's not very much. It's about 12 to 15 times a game. And with that, he's bringing you right around three yards of carry. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not solid production. Granted, it is good opportunity now with Brett out for the whole week uh, with his ankle injury, even though there is a chance he still might play. So Alfred Morris might still just go back to that 12 to 14, three to four yards per carry. He's only had one touchdown this season, even with the, the somewhat volume that he's gotten. He's on a worse team. San Francisco with the Thard out there running things just has not looked like this offense that you really want a lot to have a part of. I kind of like Kittle on that team, but that's about it. They haven't really gotten anything going as far as any game. And I don't think that they will. I think that all of their top, all of their top talent got injured early. And so therefore they're not going to be able to go with their solid game plan with that Kyle Shanahan ran off on offense like they were originally wanting. Uh, you got them just devastated by injury right now. And again, I mean, most of these guys are IR, so they're not coming back anytime soon. But Breda is. And so when he gets back, he's going to be running. All right, let's take it over Wendell Smallwood. Mike, kick it off. With Wendell Smallwood, he's this is the guy to me that has kind of the eye raised because he might be able to be the guy that takes over that backfield overall. I mean, you've got a lot of mouths to feed when you've got everybody healthy with Clement, Sproles, and Ajay. But that probably won't be a time where all four, three of those guys line up and they're not injured. Jay Ajay has just been trash this year. Yesterday, he went eight carries for 29 yards. Eight carries for 29 yards. That's just nothing. This guy out here, he's been doing good. Just this year alone, he's had 35 touches, 246 yards, two touchdowns. He's led five games, and only one of those games has he started. But once again, Jay Ajay's out there, and he's not doing anything. Corey Clement's injured. Darren Sproles is injured. It's going to be the Wendell Smallwood show. And that offense has just not looked like an offense without having that running game established. Last year with Blunt, they were able to punch it in there every single time. Well, now they got this guy who's 5'10", 200. He was drafted by them in 2016, so you know they want him in this system. Why not get this guy integrated now? Because he's by far the best back in that backfield. So for me, he's worth the add just because he's going to be the guy getting the key amount of volume on that team. With his pass catching ability, he's able to take over that, uh, take over the backfield in the capacity of a three-down back. Again, he will be sharing work, but with his dominance going the way it's going right now, he probably won't be sharing much work because it seems to me like they actually win with him on this team. And as long as Ajayi struggles and Clement and Sproles stay injured, He's going to keep going. They want to have that looked explosive offense. They want to pass the ball a lot. And the only way to be able to do that is to have an effective running game. And you're not going to have an effective running game unless you have a decent running back. They have the offensive line. And Wendell Smallwood is very evasive. He's very fast. He runs a 4 4 7 40, which is just a hair under a 4 5 40. I mean, the guy can get out there. He can catch the ball, which makes him a huge value for PPR leagues everywhere. So for me, this is the guy that I'm looking to add this week just because I think he might. All right. So are we sure Wendell Smallwood is even going to be relevant at all? Jay Ajayi is definitely the lead back there right now, even though he's dealing with injuries. Corey Clement is arguably more valuable than Smallwood, even though he didn't play this week, but when he does, I think he's more valuable. Darren Sproles, when healthy, is the second best PPR back on the team. This is a crowded and injury-riddled backfield. The only reason Smallwood has been relevant for two weeks out of the season so far is because he happened to get in the end zone those two weeks. The guy had three carries this past week. Three. That's it. Ajayi is more than likely playing this week on Thursday. Clement could get in on the action too. The Eagles offensive line, which was number one last season, is definitely not what it was. As a team, the Eagles are 14th in rushing yards on the season with 554, compared to the 49ers third ranked 681 rushing yards. With Smallwood, you're taking a shot that he gets into the end zone. If everyone in front of him gets hurt, which, I mean, it seems like they're doing, right? Then he's going to have a good shot to put up a great fantasy performance with more certainty. But right now, 
there's a lot in front of him. Uh, so it's it's not looking good in my opinion. Okay, so taking this back to Alfred Morris, like I said, the 49ers are going to up their run game this week, especially against a defense that has been worse than average against the run this season. The Packers just gave up 95 yards to the Lions running backs. If Morris can get you around 80 yards on the ground and another 20 through the air, maybe scoring a touchdown, you'll be pretty happy with that. He's 42% owned in Yahoo League, so there's a pretty good chance that you can grab him. He may not be a good play for the entire season, but if Braden misses, I think he's a must-start on Monday Night Football against Green Bay this week. See, and I mean, with me, I, I do like the fact that Alfred Morris is going to be on the field and possibly more so with Breida out. It's just the guy has just never been as productive as, a, as I've wanted him to be. He's had the opportunity, and he just doesn't ever seem to cash it in. With Smallwood for me, I don't think Jay Ajayi passes my eye test, and I do like Corey Clement. But that's coming soon. That's when he's not injured. And for right now, the guy seems like he's kind of an injury-prone, injury-risk player. So for me, adding Wendell Smallwood, again, to me, I feel like he could be this year's Alvin Kamara with the way he can come out of this backfield with his explosiveness and the ability and the need for him to be the person that they need him to be. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this week's Great Debate. Today's show was sponsored by the great memorabilia website, pristineauction.com. They have hundreds of new auctions every single day. Everything on the site is JSA certified. It's all authentic. It's free to join. It's free to bid. And you only pay when you win the auction. Visit pristineauction.com today and let them know that you heard about them from Sleeperwire. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. All right, guys, follow us on Twitter at Sleeperwire Show. I am on there at Prof underscore Chris SW. Mike is on there at Dirty Jobs 21. You can also follow us on Sleeper at Professor Chris and Dirty Jobs and on the Fantasy Life app at Professor Chris and Dirty Jobs there as well. Mike, thanks for joining me once again. As always, man, it's a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you next week.